Well, hi, hi everyone. Thank you for the opportunity for, for me to present uh, my company, Next Tiles. Uh, but really, before we begin, I do want to talk about uh, the status quo of what we're trying to do. So at Next Tiles, we are a materials and manufacturing company. Uh, but that said, we primarily look at soft good sensor technology. And to do that, we need to look at what competitors do and what the current market is offering. And the status quo that we're talking about is primarily pod-based, rigid-based, strap-based, and sometimes adhesive-based. That to understand human motion, human mechanics, anything about the environment through wearables, it's actually quite a misnomer. They're not really wearables, they're, they're strappables. But what we do instead at Nextiles is that we found a way to take the beauty of semiconductor industry or the, the advantages of semiconductors, which are the materials, the chemistry, silicon, and actually infuse them into threads and fabrics and actually use the same sewing machines you would use at any kind of shot that makes your garments. So what we wanted to do was at a foundational level, can we extract the chemical, electrical, mechanical properties of PCBs, electronics, but have them be used in fabrics, but also adopt the flexibility, the form factor, the breathability of fabrics and textiles. So that being said, uh, what we do in the market is we're more of a B2B to C company. We have an incredible expertise and a factory also in New Jersey and also locally in Brooklyn of making garments that can be white labeled. And to really discuss the ingredients that make a product is that 90 to 95% of the product is still a piece of fabric or a garment. But to make compression garments like it's sleeves or uh, t-shirts, it's still gonna be your polyester, spandex, cotton blend. The secret sauce really comes down to that five to 10% of real estate that we take over. That's where we sew in the conductive fibers, semiconductor materials, and also include uh, IP protected uh, connectors and casings for battery, Bluetooth, and all the other sensing modalities you would usually find in a watch. So in combination, we have sensors that measure forces such as strain, pressure, bedding, primarily due to the mechanical uh, changes in the fabric, which lead to electrical change that we can measure uh, through a pod that we actually attach either to the upper sleeve or to uh, a, a location that's actually not that uh, disruptive. The next one is more about uh, gait analysis. So we are really focusing on the athletic market. That said, they're really interested in joint measurements, technique analysis, load measurements. Uh, one of our partners right now is the NBA. We're actually looking towards ground forces. What's the gait like? What's the amount of pressure or forces that your body's enduring when it hits the ground? And we've actually done that by, again, using the same ingredients of the fabric, our sensors, and also the, the battery and Bluetooth pack to really get two-dimensional understanding of ground forces, but also when you do machine learning and uh, basically just physics, uh, three-dimensional rendering of where that foot is in space. In terms of our timeline, we do have uh, a capability to do physiological measurements as well. Rather than the mechanical things like stretching and bending, we can also do the physiological, which are breathing, temperature, humidity, things are more innate to humans. And that's actually through tuning the materials so that they can actually sense uh, the, the, the expansion of the chest, the temperature of the body, or the, the moisture of the environment. And that can still be done with fabrics because if it can, dumpy, if it can, if it can be done in uh, semiconductor or silicon world, we're just taking those same materials and putting them into the fabric world. Uh, right now, this is being sponsored or being supported by the NSF SBR phase one, uh, also by the Air Force is where we can actually use the same uh, uh, fabrics that are highly conductive and actually use them as electrodes. So for things like skin voltage measurements, EKG, EMG, EEG, potentially oximeters, that's actually not too divorced from our technology as well. As long as we can build materials that are fabric-based, but recapitulate the functionality of semiconductors, we can still do these types of sensing modalities down the road. What does differentiate our technology is that we're not a one-trick pony where we deliver a white label product. We just kind of leave it as a paperweight. We actually do build the infrastructure for the data analysis. What we do is we actually build an entire suite of APIs for you to either connect to your Bluetooth device, save your data on the cloud, analyze your data to get metrics or machine learning insights, and we bundle that into an SDK. The differentiation of the SDK is that it's just downloadable. It hides all the coding languages that kind of encapsulates all the APIs into something you can download onto the iOS, uh, Android, or even the web so that another company can then leverage these packages, these libraries, then use them for their existing app. So again, for someone like the NBA, Nike, or uh, Lululemon, if they have an app, we don't want to supersede them and say, hey, use ours instead. What we want to do is say, we can give you a component to build on top of to then render the UI UX of your choice. And after that, we are uh, located locally just because our materials can be used anywhere. We decided to do this homegrown in the United States. We have a factory uh, right here in New Jersey. 
we prototype in Brooklyn just because it's threads. We can use any kind of sewing machine. So we are based in New York. We are uh, backed by the NSF, the Air Force. We have a variety of sponsors such as the uh, Council of Fashion Designers, uh, you know, Fashion Association International, Material Connection. And finally, uh, one of our biggest partners is the NBA, but we have smaller ones in tennis, baseball, and uh, combat sports and soon to be football. That uh, said, our ask right now is that we are uh, growing as a company. Uh, we are looking for a seed round of 5 million. Uh, this round actually will be closing in the next month, month and a half. And that's really just to uh, expand the team. We have a lot of asks and requests to build white label products for existing companies, whether that could be a Peloton or a Nike, we can definitely work with them, but we just need the bandwidth to cater to their demands and how to customize their products for them. Working capital research and kind of all the other logistics that come with a growing company. So uh, this is who we are. Uh, it's, it's me, George, John Peters, Matt Evans, and one of our advisors, Eric Chan. We have a growing list of employees and contractors and uh, super proud of the team that we're growing uh, locally in the United States. We're happy to be homegrown and uh, happy to take your questions. Thank you, George. Any questions for George from Next Labs? Go ahead, David. Thank you, George. That was very interesting. Um, I was wondering if you could elaborate a bit more on your intellectual property. So do, do, is this patented and uh, is your material proprietary? And if so, you know, how does that work with supply chain and you know, all of that? Absolutely. I would actually uh, segregate it between the materials and how we build it. The materials, I would say, is actually not new. Making anything conductive, is, you can make a potato conductive. That's not new. But the IP is really surrounded by the manufacturing. How do you take the logic of a semiconductor and fuse that with the logic of a piece of fabric? And so our first patent was a systems patent. After that was a manufacturing patent of, I know the theory behind making a sensor. Now, how do I make what are the recipe, what are the steps? The third patent we have is a device patent. We actually go through, I think 30 types of garments that we cover of saying, this is how you make a shirt. This is how you make a beanie. This is how you make a hat. And after that, we have several other patents more on the connectors, uh, the algorithms and also on the biometrics. So our patents really focus on the concept of a sensor and then how to manufacture it. Thank you. Kathleen? I'm just curious, a build on the, the material question, are there any gaps currently in the materials you're using, like opportunities <laughs> for regulations <laughs> or new molecules? Oh, okay. Can you mute? Okay, I, I, I did hear the question. I think you're saying any gaps, right? Yeah, gaps to materials that allow for additional uh, IP around composition of matter, formulations. Um, I understand you're using yeah. What's What does the uh, future, what do you know? There's, there's two. One of the gaps is mainly logistical. Like, can we, right now we've done 50 professional wash dry cycles after 50 and even beyond. We're very confident that these fabrics can survive but we do want the robustness to be even higher. Maybe we can do 500 to 1,000. So that, that you know, we, we're putting this on football players. They're getting grass stains on them. You know, someone's just putting it and maybe ripping it apart. We, we want to increase robustness through the materials. We do that primarily through sewing and different seams, but obviously the chemicals themselves and the materials themselves can help that. The second is the sensitivity. We have yet to optimize the sensitivity so that it can measure things like a joint movement, but also the beating of the heart. I don't know if you caught that, but for, the physiological measurements, we're actually measuring the compression and expansion of the chest through the expansion of the fabric. Fabric. We're also seeing that the heartbeat can also give us a signal as well. And that signal tuning through impedance matching or just through resistive changes or capacitive changes, we're looking to that right now. Okay, I think we have time for just one more question from Tina. Thank you. I was going to ask about the wash cycle, but it seems like you have at least uh, solved some of those durability issues. Now, the next question is around the business model. Apparently, um, this is beyond just making a fabric, right? You actually build a whole suite of software enabling behind it. So how do you plan to monetize? Yes, so right now we work with either medium-sized companies to large-sized companies. Medium-sized companies, we are a full stack product for them. So we do white label the good, they license our software through the SDK and we have a recurring fee through uh, the API call. So. Let's say we work with um, like a trading facility or a D1 school. They would have a per order uh, uh, purchase of uh, you know, monthly orders of sleeves or socks or what have them. They will white label it according to their brand or their university. 
they will license uh, for a year on the SDK, meaning that they can download it, use it. But then the APIs, meaning their, their athletes or the people who are using their app or their technology, uh, is going to pay us about $5 per user per month. That is just to store their data, house the data, and, and you know, have all that security. For long term, uh, and this may happen with the NBA because I can speak about that publicly, is that they will license the, the, the technology instead. So we would actually get, be an ingredient for them. If their partner is Nike, we would instead either teach Nike the process or actually build that 5 to 10% that I was talking about. Because again, this product is still a piece of garment. We're just actually sewing in our technology. So they would instead license the IP, we can either build them that component and teach them how to incorporate that in their supply chain, or they can just handle the whole thing for us. And we're, we're more than happy to do that. But then afterwards, the SDK download and API costs and fees uh, are, are, will be the same. 